Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience Methods 101. Today we're going to talk about magnetoencephalography or MEG. Whether a brain is sleeping, meditating or concentrating results in different patterns of activity that lead to oscillating brain signals. In an earlier video we discussed how electroencephalography or in short EEG can pick up small fluctuations of electrical activity produced by groups of neurons. Since magnetoencephalography picks up similar neurophysiological processes, first let's quickly recap in a few sentences how EEG picks up these signals. When a neuron sends an action potential, there is an influx and outflux of charged particles, resulting in a positively and negatively charged pole. When a group of neurons is active in synchrony, this charge can be picked up as a signal on the head with EEG sensors. So with that in mind, what is MEG? Well, basically MEG is EEG on steroids. It's bigger, it's bulkier and it's more expensive. Having said that, MEG has some clear advantages over EEG. But first, let's explore how MEG picks up signals from the brain. The principles are quite similar to EEG. However, rather than picking up electrical signals directly, MEG looks at the magnetic properties of the charge that is created by synchronously firing neurons. Based on Faraday's law of induction, each electrical current is accompanied by a magnetic field. Thus, small electrical signals produced by groups of neurons can be seen as a small electrical circuit. And these small electrical signals are accompanied by very small magnetic fields. These magnetic fields curl around the electrical circuit and radiate in a perpendicular direction according to the right hand rule. Just as electrical signals induced by a group of neurons can be detected with EEG sensors, the magnetic signals that are simultaneously induced by the same group of neurons can also be picked up. But in this case we use MEG sensors. So how do these sensors pick up the signal? Well, MEG sensors are called superconducting quantum interference devices, or in short, squids. These small induction coils are cooled to approximately minus 270 degrees Celsius using liquid helium. This allows for superconductance, reducing the signal loss to a minimum. This is crucial since the magnetic fields induced by synchronized neuronal firing are much smaller than general magnetic noise in the environment. At these squid sensors an electrical signal is induced by the magnetic fields, again through the principles of induction, but this time in the opposite way, from a magnetic field to an electrical signal. Despite the different ways of picking up these signals, EEG and MEG pick up quite similar neurophysiological processes. Not entirely the same though, because MEG primarily picks up signals from sulcal walls, whereas EEG picks up signals from both gyri and sulci. Nevertheless, resulting patterns look quite similar and enable us to pick up different rhythms, such as a delta, theta, alpha, beta and gamma activity. Additionally, when coupling MEG signals to a stimulus, event-related potentials or ERPs can be recorded, which couple a specific occurrence to a specific brain signal. So if EEG and MEG pick up similar signals, why choose for MEG? Because on the first glance MEG doesn't look like a great choice, since it is more expensive and it requires participants to sit perfectly still, allowing for even less movement freedom than with EEG. However, MEG does have one major advantage. Electrical signals picked up by EEG are distorted by cerebrospinal fluid and the skull. This means that the ability to find where a signal comes from is extremely difficult and very imprecise with EEG. With MEG, however, the spatial resolution is much better since magnetic fields are not distorted by the skull. With the large amount of MEG sensors, typically around 300 or even more, we can get a relatively good idea which brain areas are responsible for recorded MEG signals. So I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something, don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you the next time. Bye bye!